Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategy to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Aria Strategic Design. What's going on, Matt? Oh, not much. Um, I am back in this setup and everything should be working fine this time yeah, around. I know our last episode kind of got a little weird. Uh, and I had to dub over myself, which was the worst experience I've ever, ever done. Um, but yeah, no, this episode should be perfectly fine. No, no audio errors. Let's that cross that our is fingers. the last thing you should probably say. Awesome. Well, <laughs> a, as you can see here today, we have Adam Silver joining us from Kitchen Sink WP, and we're going to be talking about WordPress in the flesh. Uh, this is kind of a piggyback episode, uh, you know, a continuation of the talk we had with Dave Navarro Jr. about his uh, WordPress meetup that he started and the success he's had with that. And Adam has done all kinds of in-person networking uh, with WordPress. So I think he's gonna be a great source for us here. So hello and good morning, Adam. How are you doing today? Good morning, guys. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Happy yeah, to be works. here. We're excited to have you. I've been on, you know, I like to I like to prep a little bit. You can't tell by listening to our show, but I do prep for these episodes a little bit. Uh, so uh, I found your podcast not too long ago and, and listened to some episodes. And in the last few days, I've been getting up every morning and listening to a bunch. So your your voice is stuck in my head right now. So that's a good thing, though. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, for people that aren't familiar with you yet, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and how you're involved with WordPress? So like you said, my name is Adam Silver, also uh, not the NBA commissioner, so people confuse me. Yeah. He is, uh, makes more money, I have more hair. So I, I like yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I do own the domain, I own adamsilver.com. So nice. I've had it for 21, 22 years. You can actually go there and I just relaunched it um, a few months ago just as a home base. It's kind of funny, now it shows a picture of me, my properties that I own, a picture of him, and a link to the NBA site. Anyway, people, I get tweets to him all the time. People are not happy with me when he's the playoffs. That's so, awesome. That said, uh, I run uh, I two brands, Kitchen Sink WP, as you mentioned. That is my community give back, my podcast. I've been around now for five and a half, almost six years. And I also run a small WordPress agency called Concierge WP out here in North Carolina, originally from Southern California. That's me in a nutshell. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Goodbye. Right. <laughs> yes, you do have quite the collection of podcast episodes, and I have to commend you on your dedication to that because that. Man, it, it takes a lot of work. It's it's no joke to get up and try to do this every week. Yeah, yeah. it's been an episode, as of this recording, episode 306 came out uh, yesterday. So 306 Mondays in a row, haven't missed one yet, knock on wood, even recorded with a cracked rib at one point. Um, that's a whole, that's a WordPress and WordCamp story, actually, if you want to hear about it. But uh, I also have another podcast, just a shout out, it's called Get Options Podcast. That's with my co-host, Kyle Maurer. And uh, we've done about 115 episodes on that show. As you guys know, it's hard to schedule sometimes with two people. So it hasn't been as consistent, but it's a fun show. Uh, it's, it's a pithy take on your, your life of WordPress. So. Very cool. nice. I'm going to have to check that one out too. I got a new one to binge on. We'll make sure to include all those links here in the show notes. So like I said, today, we're going to be kind of talking about WordPress in the flesh. So I want to, you know, a lot of us are in these groups, you know, primarily the admin bars focus around our community and the group. And we do this to network with other WordPress professionals. Uh, and I think for a lot of us, that's our primary interaction with you know, with uh, our contemporaries, but there's a whole uh, real world outside of the computer screen. So what can you tell us, do you think the biggest differences are between the kind of networking we do online and actually being together in person? Well, it's um, awkward to say the least. I mean, I think a lot of people starting WordPress have no idea about the community. I know, I mean, I hear this over and over again. Um, and it's just one of those things that you just start working in WordPress in whatever capacity you came into it. Like I came into WordPress as a photographer built a new site for myself and I'm like here we go here's a new site everyone I'm ready for business and crickets you know <laughs> typical you think that's you think the website is the key the end all to your business problems it's not really it's just a piece of the puzzle but that said I then I don't know how I, I think I went on uh iTunes and I typed in podcasts no no I typed in uh, an island podcasting app I typed in WordPress to see what was out there and I found a few some had already gone away and then from there I heard about meetups and then from meetups I heard about WordCamps um, and that is how I kind of got started in going to these things in real life in the IRL world. And the main difference is um, what I noticed right away was how receptive everybody is no matter what level you're at, it's right off the bat. You know, I came from a technical background, uh, going to conferences, going to trade shows, going to corporate these events, going to a WordCamp, a meetup, 
everybody was super cool, like really nice. And of course you're gonna find some outliers where they think they're mightier than thou and they know everything. And right. they've been around since, you know, you know, the first line of code was ever written. <laughs> but the reality is I would say 98% of everybody is really cool. Yeah, no, I, I'm always surprised, you know, like uh, our, like the admin bar, for example, you know, somebody posts a, uh, a question or something and they might, they might preface it with something along the lines of this might be stupid, but, but nobody, nobody calls them out on it. Like we're yeah. all here to help each other. I mean, we all do the same thing, but we're not necessarily competition. Like, and that's the thing that's weird, man. I gotta tell you, I am shocked at the lack of quote competition. When I was a photographer, it was always like, Oh, I can't show you how I got the client. I can't show you my pricing or my albums. There was a there's that fear. It's it's the um basic concept of abundance versus scarcity. Right? I used to be afraid of other photographers in a sense, and, or other developers. I would send off emails from an old um I used to have like a little hotmail account that I just kind of kept on the DL. I'd send someone an email like, hey, how much do you charge for a three-page website? Or when I was doing photography, how much do you charge for this type of corporate headshot to see how they were getting business, what their pricing is. I don't care now. Right. You know, the three of us, we all have agencies. There is plenty of work for all of us if we want it. Right? Yeah. It's about what kind of work you want, what do you want to offer, what's the value proposition you give to your clients. That's it's that simple, you know. Um, it's just I don't find anyone in, in a sense, you know, yes, is there direct competition? Sure. Is that good for everyone? It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Does it keep me up at night anymore? Not at all. <laughs> no, and and you know the WordPress events are just so much different than any other industry events I've been to. So before this, I was in the print industry, and and our events were not a collaborative experience like right. that. Uh, my wife is a she's a counselor, and she had a a conference, a huge conference, thousands and thousands of people. You know, a hundred WordPresses put together. You know, and the there was no like cool perks like we get at word camps where there's like, you know, you get cool stickers and everybody's here to help each other out. I mean, just like when I tell her about, you know, oh yeah, we ate lunch for free and got all this cool swag and came home. She's like, what? Like, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a completely different ball game. You know, have you guys seen the documentary, the open documentary? Yeah. 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 yeah so, so I've been there for a snippet. There's like a lot more footage out there, you know, and it's open sourced. It's called the open documentary for those who don't know. And uh, I was asked to be in that and I was in it and they interviewed for an hour. And, um, you know, the line that they pulled out for me was, you know, you go to these other industry things or industry events, your business to business, whereas word camps are about community. You know, it's, it's just that, and that's a, it's really that different. And, you know, from a word camp going downwards, you know, going, I guess, more focused is you have the meetups, the monthly meetups, because the word camp is really just the annual one time meetup, if you will, you know what I mean? Like the bigger version of the monthly, um, and meetups are just it's just the same thing. It's like people just come in to get help and learn and teach. I, and I love doing that. That's why I got involved. I uh, you asked why or how the difference is. I got involved because there wasn't one in my own area. You know, in Southern California, as you know, it's just it's so broad. Yeah. So I decided to kind of start one in my own neighborhood. So I did the South Bay WordPress meetup for four and a half years until we moved here. So, yeah, it's 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 completely different than people expect, and it shocks people all the time. Yeah, me and Matt uh, attended our first WordCamp, both of us together here at the Dallas Fort Worth one, not in, in I guess in 2018. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that was our first one. We had literally no idea what to expect walking <laughs> in the door. And, you know, a couple hours in, I knew I was hooked and this would be, right. You know, this is going on the calendar every year. Yeah. It's, it's my, one of my favorite things to see is new people, new faces. You just know. I mean, I've been to so many WordCamps. Um, I think you guys can see in the camera behind me. Um, those are all my lanyards. All for those all my tags. Lanyards. <laughs> you know, those guys. Plus, there's more that don't have lanyards, you know, that are on right. the counter there. Um, I'm, closing, I'm closing in on, I mean, I, I average, the first year I went to two, and then every year after that, for the next four or five years, I doubled previous year. So I average eight to 10 a year right now, so wow. you know, give or take. Um, and, the, and, and just so you know, I mean, it's out of pocket, you know, I mean, I'm yeah. never, I'm not paid to go, I don't, it's not my job to go. Right. But some people do a lot more, obviously, you know, you have the people that work for the hosting companies, you have the people who work for the plugging companies, it's their job. So they're going to go to a lot more. Uh, for me, it was a choice that my wife and I agreed upon. Like it was an investment that would do this. And from my perspective, it kind of got me out there as um, a subject matter expert. I started podcasting about it. I'd rather speak than write blogs. Um, when I, the first one I went to, I went to work camp Orange County 20, I don't know, uh, 12 or 13, I think. And I remember thinking, these are my people. This is it. I have that exact same feeling, you know? So 
but you have to give you have to give back before people kind of just you can't go in um i don't want to be crude but you can't go in full steam ahead and just try to get business and try to make make forged relationships it takes time to nurture them. um and i always tell people now like i have twelve thousand images just shy of twelve thousand images on my iphone half of those WordPress related conferences you know, or work camps and people and vacations and just getting together with people. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty awesome. And I mean, like, you know, you go to these things, especially in the beginning, like you're not entirely sure what to expect. And then like Kyle said, you go to the first one and you're, you're pretty much hooked. The, uh, the opening or the, uh, the keynote speech to the very first one Kyle and I went to was a little bit weird. And we were looking at each other like, is this going to be what it is? But uh, that was just a hiccup. That was a strange little uh, blip on the radar. Um, but I would assume that, like, you know, being there in person and, you know, actually being a, a speaker, too, like, that would probably lead to some benefit to yourself. I mean, you're not going there, like you said, looking for anything. But, like, what kind of, like, residual benefits do you, uh, do you find? Well, I will tell you. So I remember going to the first one. And then thinking, you know, I want to do this, and I can do that, and I want to speak. And I remember when I first applied to speak at a WordCamp, WordCamp LA, I don't know, 2015, 2016. It was like a couple years later. It was like, it was a while in a sense. And I was really nervous. And, I, and I'm a public speaker. I have no problem speaking. I have a degree in theater performance. Um, I did stand up, all those things. I was really nervous in speaking because it wasn't like I was nervous about my audience that I could control. I mean, I'm good for the audience. And I have teaching WordPress essentials course at the local adult school. Um, I was, now thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm a work camp speaker. How will I be received from that, from my peers? I was yeah. nervous about the peer reception per se, which is now kind of sick. As far as the benefits, yeah, I get work. I get more speaking gigs. I get, um, you know, just uh, people contact me as a reference point, you know, and not just from that, but also they hear, then they hear that I have a podcast, listen to the podcast. I get work from that as well, you know? Um, so it's just, it builds again, it builds trust. Uh, I don't know everything. I know what I know. I'm honest to a fault. You know, I mean, you can't know everything. And someone mm -hmm. who's trying to know what I know, they never will be able to catch up. If I continue mm -hmm. learning, it's always going to be that, you know, that, that I'm going to outpace somebody, not because I'm better than them, just because I'm further along my journey, unless I completely stop or drop dead. Right. So, no, I, mean, I mean, like yeah. for a lot of people, you uh, you mentioned public speaking and, and yeah. that, you know, there's there's opportunity there and that it's fun and this and that. And they're thinking in the back of their head. Absolutely not. Like right. I, I, if I go up there, I'm going to freeze. I'm going to dry heave. I'm going to like I'm going to make a fool out of myself. Like, how do you I get did over all that three of those hump? things at WordCamp BFW <laughs> last year? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that was that was Kyle's first time, you know, like he had never done it. He had texted me and like we'd been messaging up until there. And then like even even like, you know, on the the drive there he's like yeah like now i'm starting not to be as nervous like now that it's like here but yeah like i can't i can't imagine like i can sit in front of this camera mm -hmm. and talk to you guys and know that it's gonna either be live or it's gonna be recorded and you know a ton of people are gonna see it but actually being there in the room and seeing all of those faces in person like that's, here, that's here's what i tell people it is, it is for most people. I was, there's an old joke saying most people rather, you know, um, die versus giving the eulogy, right? <laughs> or so they'd rather die on the way to giving the eulogy because they don't want to do right. public speaking is like a big, huge fear. I always tell people who ask me for my opinion and my advice on this is nobody wants you to fail. No matter where you are speaking, yeah. especially at WordCamps, nobody wants you to fail. You know, as long as you know your content and you're comfortable there, you'll get through it. You may not be the best speaker. And a lot of people in technology aren't very good speakers. I mean, case, I mean, it's very true where it's just a matter of, it's not natural for many people to do that. Um, for me, it's like, how is that not? It's just, it's, it's, it's you, you do it or you don't. People can get, you can always get better. Mm -hmm. sure. um, it's just a matter of practice, obviously. And yeah, most people just, it, it's actually, I still get a little nervous per se at my first thought because it's like, it will this be received well. The minute you get like overly confident and cocky, that's a problem. I mean, I bombed when I did stand up. I bombed a couple times. It's not pretty because yeah, I was yeah. too confident. I was too cocky because like the show before that, like two or three weeks before, I killed. So for the next three weeks, did I prep? Not at all. Like I got this. <laughs> not a good way to go on stage. Yeah, there's there's a certain level of humility we all need to retain. Every time. For sure. Every time. Yeah. It's all. Yeah. The public speaking. No one wants you to fail. Know that. If, if there's one takeaway from today, just go out and try it. And the thing is, 
I like to give back. I like to share what I know. Um, so uh, that's why I do it. I really enjoy sharing. And my style of sharing is usually through humor of some capacity. So my style of speaking has that. I don't intend to be funny or tell jokes. It just kind of comes out that way. One of the things that, uh, that Kyle and I noticed um, at this last uh, WordCamp that we went to was that uh, one speaker, actually Nathan, he's been on the uh, the show, he... Uh, he started his talk. I mean, he was confident. He, he like he had definitely been doing this for a while. But uh, the first thing that he did was he got up there and he started asking questions to the audience. And that kind of broke a lot of the tension but like between those two mm-hmm. different, you know, sides of the uh, the podium. And Kyle, like when he started doing this, he leans over to him and he's like, this guy knows what he's doing. Like this, <laughs> yeah. that is smart, you know, because yeah, that gets yeah. the, the audience like kind of on your side and like, you know, you get a little bit of back and forth rather than just talking at a group of people. Right. You, have, you, yeah. know, you, you need to know the audience. Sorry, go ahead. Go. I was going to say two lessons I learned where he's talking about Nathan Ingram, Nathan Ingram, oh, two man. lessons I learned. Oh, I know Nathan. Uh, mm-hmm. One, go, you need to watch him before you do your talk because you'll learn a lot from him. And two, if he comes in to sit in on your talk, pretend he's not there because I think that was a mistake. I'm looking down at seeing him, uh, <laughs> seeing him look back at me, which was a little uncomfortable for me. Yeah. So Nathan and I are good friends. Actually, I, we were chatting last night on Facebook because uh, I'm having an issue with a different a WooCommerce store we're building or something. And I'm like, this won't change anyway. So he had an idea that didn't work. But um, yeah, Nathan's awesome. It's true. I like to ask questions also. Because right away, it just, it's interactive. You need, you need to know the audience. If it makes sense to ask a question, ask a question. You know? Right. I, I also recommend real quick as a speaker tip. Um, again, I, I do this a lot for speaking. Um, I, it, it depends on the venue you're at, say a WordCamp. If you have someone introducing you, great. Don't waste two to three minutes telling people who you are. You know, don't, don't have a slide about you as your first slide. Right. Have that be your, your last slide. Here's how to follow me. Here's all my information. Last slide, you know, behind you. The picture of you as a baby, whatever. That's I use a picture of me on a phone from when I was like, like a Sears portrait kind of thing. Because <laughs> nice. um, it makes sense. Like, call me, whatever, you know. Right. But if you've been introduced properly, people are there because they've already read your bio. They know you. Right. It's, you know, it's a little, um, I think, not self-serving per se, but it's just, it can be, especially if you're doing a lightning talk, but you only have so much time. And it's always hard to get through a lot of content in 35, 40 minutes, and then do Q&A, especially the work hands, you know. Um, but questions when you first start, fantastic way to uh, kind of break the ice. Yeah, it, Nathan was definitely a pro, so I was impressed with oh, yeah. him. Yeah. I talk about everything he knows. <laughs> we, we won't tell him any of this, of course. No, no, no. I will I will say, I found it interesting, you, we, uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking, you kind of talked about how you and your wife decided, you talked about it and decided this was kind of an investment in your business, which I think is an, an interesting way to look at it. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, us people with, with kids and responsibilities and things, it's not easy to leave for the weekend to go to a word camp when I'm leaving three kids, you know, I got mm-hmm. three little ones at home, you know, that's, it's difficult to do, but it is, it, it can be an investment in your business and it has to be kind of the way you approach and look at this. And I'm wondering, you know, we, we talked about some kind of some of these benefits uh, from like the speaker point of view, but just, just attending the word camp, if you're not one of the people that wants to get up there and speak, um, just attending the word camp, what are some of the benefits people could look for getting out of that without, you know, I don't want to be selfish. Like you have to go here to get something. Cause I don't think that's what it's about, but, uh, you know, what, are, what are some of the reasons people could justify this as a, uh, as, as an investment in their company? Okay. So two answers. One is the joke answer wardrobe. You get a shirt. That's true. You get <laughs> no. a bunch of shirts if you're lucky. I mean, man, I got wearing, like four pairs of socks. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm wearing Work Camp US. I'm wearing a hoodie here from Chicago. Whatever. I can literally go 90 days in a row with a WordPress related item, not nice. do laundry. 90, I'm up to 90. Yeah, I'm doing a quilt pretty soon. Anyway, um, <laughs> the benefits from the business perspective are relationships because you never know who you can connect with, who you're going to meet. It's really that simple. Again, it goes back to the first time. When I first went to WordCamp, I was desperate for work. And that's a bad way to go to a WordCamp. Don't be desperate for work. Because like how dogs can fear, um, uh, sense fear, people sense desperation. You know, you need to be open. You need to be friendly. And because you're just, if you're just desperate, like I'll do anything, it doesn't come off well. Or, you know, if you're, if you're selling right from the get-go, not the best idea. You don't want to be selling at WordCamp specifically. Um, you want to be helpful. You want to be encouraging, inspiration. You want to be inspired. So hopefully you get some inspiration to take action on something that you're stuck on, right? Mm-hmm. 
but I think that's the benefit is really those relationships because it's crazy now who I know. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years. You know, I mean, I'm looking back at my work press life. It's been 10 years, which is crazy to me to think that. I mean, funny story. Let's go back to Nathan real quick. I know who he was because he used to be, was it Nathan or was it Adrian Morris? He was also Nathan. He was doing trainings way back for somebody. And I saw him at work camp Boston. We were walking in together out of the blue. And I saw his badge. I'm like, oh, it's, oh, it's Nathan. You know, and I, you know, I just, I was like, I kind of fanboyed. I'm like, I know Nathan. And then we become really good friends. But it's like from afar, again, difference between online communities versus in real life, you get to meet people, you know, really meet people. And at the end of a word camp or during a word camp weekend, you get past the how's business. I need this thing fixed with woo or, you know, or beaver builder, or I just saw someone posted recently on headway. I'm like, what, really? Headway's still there? <laughs> it's not really around. It's just weird. Um, but at the end of all that, when you're at a lunch or you're at the after party, you're just hanging out, like, you know, the happiness area, you can have some really deep conversations about life. You know, the fact that, you know, how you have three young kids, my kids were young. Now they're teens. I have more experience there. So maybe you're having an issue. We become friends that way. Um, and it's just, to me, that's one of the benefits that also help my overall business because it helps my family life. Because now I have a, I have a, my wife, here's the thing. My wife will never hear this podcast. <laughs> so, Come on, she's told. a huge fan. Of huge the fan, Bar. huge, no. <laughs> um, she, she, um, she doesn't care about, quote, my ideas in, in the broader sense. I learned this the hard way, if you will. You know, we had a, we had a big dip back in, in our marriage, you know, years ago. Um, what she cares about is, do we have rent, mortgage, health insurance, food covered, bills paid? If so, so the community being in there in real life is that is my you guys are my business partners, that I can, or my business association, right? right? Without having to be, you know, I want my wife involved, I really do, but she doesn't have an interest in it, and I learned that by by this balance. So that's why she supported it. You know, um, like I said, it wasn't a cheap venture for you know five six years ago into you know camps luckily she had a different job at the time she was home on the weekends now she's not you know um i couldn't do it now it'd be a much harder to do now. well if my kids were if she had a job she had now and my kids were the age then yeah it'd be harder she's gone 50 percent. so she's a flight attendant so that's the difference. yeah so. yeah and i think one thing people have to realize too if, if they haven't been to a word camp uh it's not it's not an intimidating place at all you will all. absolutely mm -hmm. find somebody and spark up a conversation even if you're trying not to like people will talk to you there will be things you know uh conversations going on that you'll get pulled into you'll have vendor booths you'll get to walk around and you know all the vendors are always great mm -hmm. and they have cool stuff to give you so that sparks conversation i like to go up and talk to the speakers after they're done there's usually a nice little queue of people right. that want to ask them questions but just to introduce yourself and, you know, tell them you enjoyed it or pick out something about their talk that, you know, you found inspiring. And there's, there's several people that we've had on the show that, uh, we've only had, you know, they've only been introduced to us because we met them at a word camp. There's been people, uh, that we got to meet for the first time, you know, that were in our group and, and they were at work at word camp and stuff. So you definitely don't need to feel intimidated going. There will be, uh, conversations to be had for sure. Yeah. You know, and there'll be some people that you may not connect with. So that's fine. Move on. But here's another little tip for you are as a speaker, if you get off stage and people give you a compliment and you didn't like what you did, this is something that's weird. I, I went through this myself back in the standup days. If someone's, if I say, Hey Kyle, great talk. And you say, Oh, I could have done better. Oh, I missed this slide. Or, yeah. Don't say that. <laughs> don't negate your own work. Just say, thank you. Because I don't know how you felt about your talk. Right. And it pangs me. My buddy Kyle, he's one of my closest friends. He sometimes gets on himself about how he did on something. But nobody knows how you felt. It doesn't matter how you felt. It matters how it was received. So if I give you a compliment and say, hey, that was a great talk. It worked for me. That's all you should care about. That's very yeah, true. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, you're, you're basically telling somebody that's trying to give you a compliment that they're wrong. And that's right. That, right. that kind of hurts a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I literally, I did stand up. This was when I did this a long time ago. My good buddy, Jerry, this was probably, it must've been 20 years ago, uh, give or take. Um, he was seeing me do a stand up set. It was a small sushi bar in LA. It's kind of funny. I, it's like one in the morning we're done. People coming outside and say, thanks. Okay. Good show. Good show. The comments were all just milling around. Some people are smoking. Some people aren't whatever. And he's standing like 30 feet away, just smoking a cigarette. And he hears me talking. And then we go about one in the morning. We go to this a local place called Biff's and he lays into me. And like, it brings me to tears. He like, I won't say it here to not bleep, bleep, bleep out, but cusses me out like, what the bleep, bleep, bleep was that about? I go, well, what do you mean? It's like, it's not about you, it's about that. So 
It's a, it's, that's a lesson that was hard learned. So I try to convey the same thing. It's not about me on stage. As much as you think it is, it's about what you're saying and what the audience gets out of it in any capacity, motivational speaking, teaching, uh, word camps, all that stuff. So, you know, the whole speaking industry itself, people just don't realize that it's not, it shouldn't be about them, it's about the speaker. It's a pretty important lesson. I'm glad he pulled you aside for that one. <laughs> yeah. And, and you could share it here today. I'm, I'm still in therapy for it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Luckily, I got a live in therapist. So oh, nice. it works That's out right. nice. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you talked about, about doing all the speaking and yeah. one of the projects you got going on is a project around being a speaker. It's uh, it's called Backup Speaker and I'm not going to butcher to tell everybody what it's about. So why don't you tell us a little oh. bit about it? Well, yeah. So actually it's ironic because that came out of the fact that um, I was a backup speaker. I was asked to be a backup speaker for WordCamp US 2018 and also to be a backup speaker for another uh, WordCamp over in Phoenix. Um, and in between those two trips, I was... Uh, thinking, I'm like, well, what happens when people cancel? I mean, I've been a work camp organizer for LA a couple of years. I was a work camp organizer. I was a lead there. I was an organizer for Raleigh. People cancel, things happen. So I just told her the idea. I'm like, huh, it's just not work camps. It's any conference. If someone cancels, someone gets sick, someone dies, flights delayed, weather, what do you do? Well, you either have a blank spot in that speaking, at that engagement, or you get someone else to step up, but how do you find that person? Who's available on a short notice if you have, if you have more time than just the hour ahead? Um, so I checked the domain that was available. So backupspeaker.com is coming. It's a directory for the most part. It, the value proposition is low and I get that. So it's not like it's a monthly fee. It's really like, uh, it's going to be 45 bucks a year. Uh, you'll get to put your profile up there. It's about for any topic. You get to pick your subjects, your topics, you know, how soon they're available. Um, you know, one, one day, three day, five, seven, you know, how much time you need to prep. And you're not given a speak. You're not giving, I'm like, I'm not giving your talk Kyle. I'm just giving a talk that would match the overall conference, right? Right. If you cancel. Um, and then also the, the person looking for you, for the speaker to fill a gap can search based on radius on city, you know, like within five, 10, 20 miles and price point. So then I, we make no money on that conversation. So if there's money being uh, traded, let's say Matt's looking to hire you, Kyle, you guys work it out. You may speak for free or you may sell from the back of the room, you know, that kind of thing. That's between you two. I'm just charging the speaker to be in the, in the directory. And then we're going to market it and push it out there towards, you know, conferences, conference planners, all that stuff. So it's coming. That sounds, it sounds pretty interesting. And I see, I see like the need here with the WordPress stuff, but I can also look at this from <clears throat> just from my business, my agency. So I went and gave a, a little presentation at my old chamber of commerce a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, you know, wrote up this presentation. I have slides for it and all this. I could think of a lot of different, you know, business type conferences or there's a lot of different ways where this talk could probably be adapted pretty easily and fit in. And if I was able to put that on there and, you know, say Dallas, Fort Worth area, I can right. do this. That could be, there could be opportunities that I never even knew existed come up. Especially, especially for people who want to speak more. And it's not just beginning speakers, it's any level of speaking. It's another place to be. Um, it's affordable. Right, right now, the basic package will be, like I said, 45 bucks. And if people go there right now to the site, um, you can pre-buy, which we're pre-selling it until it goes live. We're a little behind schedule, but it's coming. Um, but uh, yeah, it, there'll be eventually like maybe an, uh, there's a basic package. It might be a pro and a VIP. But as, as we all know, minimum viable product. I just I want this thing done. And I've pitched it to people. I mean, we pre-sold uh, you know, half a dozen, oh, a dozen, uh, 10, 11 people pre-bought. So the validation's there. And in the WordPress space, it's, there's not, I mean, not to say there's no money in it, but, um, you know, we're, we don't get paid to speak at WordCamps. So that's right. not the, my primary audience are not WordCamp speakers. My primary audience is speakers, <laughs> you know, period. Um, and then going after the conference planners, Kiwanis, trade shows, like you said, uh, Rotary, Chamber of Commerce, yes, yeah, sororities, fraternities. I mean, people need speakers. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And, you know, you think about it, the people who listen to this podcast have a lot of uh, subject matter expertise on Absolutely. websites, on marketing, on all kinds of things that could be really useful and, and probably help get your name out there and your business out there. So I think there's a pretty good, pretty good opportunity there. I might yeah. have to go pre, uh, pre, pre sale myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it depends on when this episode goes live, it'll be, it'll be still pre sale available or it'll be just normal price. <laughs> And I'll probably do a coupon for like the first, you know, month or so. So we'll, if, if it's, again, depends on the timing, we'll see what goes out there. 
I got I got two things I want to ask you before sure. we wrap up and get out of here. So one, I want to ask you, uh, w- what's your best WordCamp story? I'm sure you got a story and being a comedian. Come on, now you got to have a funny story. Uh, no pressure. What's a good story? What, what's something that struck you over the years? Um, WordCamp story. Um, hmm. Oh well, no, it's a work. An actual at a WordCamp. Well, well, if you got another idea, we'll, we'll let it be loose here. Okay, so most recently, this WordPress-related story, I would say, is, um, oh, I, I got a couple. Okay, so I got one or two. One is I was in Paris two years ago celebrating my my 20th uh, wedding anniversary, uh, and on a random street, ran, just walking arm in arm with my wife, um, side street, you know, downtown in Paris, in one of the uh, arrondissements, I can't say the French word, um, like in the ninth. And out of the blue, out of a random cafe, woman walks out the stair, down the stairs, and I hear Adam Silver. Just two million people in the town, in the city. And my wife's like, really, here? <laughs> and it's my friend, Tish Prasanna, who works for Automatic, actually. And she sees me, and we give her, I give her a hug. And my wife says, how do you know Adam? And she says, WordPress. And my wife's like, of course, it's WordPress. Just random, right? That's pretty um, amazing. It is pretty crazy. And that the just other, goes back to uh, the, the community as a whole. Like, how cool right? is that? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, who knew? And another story, I mean, I think, um, you know, just meeting Dustin Hartzler and meeting uh, Kyle Maurer, meeting just the people in general, meeting Matt, I guess having Matt on my podcast, that's, oh, actually, that's a pretty good story. So Matt Mullenweg has been on my, on my podcast twice. I met him originally in 2014 in San Francisco. I was dared to go ask him to be on my podcast by the guys I was, the friends I was with. So I asked him, he's like, yeah. So then we connected, uh, and then I was still friends with, I was really good friends with Dustin at the time, who was pretty new at Automatic. He's been there for like six years now. And I didn't tell anybody that he was on the show until it came out because I, you never know if it was going to get canceled, if it doesn't show, whatever. Right. And um, he, uh, he's on the show. So then I'm out running the day it comes out uh, on the track. I run a lot. And uh, Dustin sent me a text like at 6 30 uh, a.m. Pacific. It's, you know, I don't know. I guess it must have been 9 30 here. I was on the Pacific Coast still. It's like, how hard was that to keep a secret from me? I'm like, you have no idea. So <laughs> I didn't want anyone to know. No, he knew the second time because at this point, you know, he, he knew he, he right. sees the internal messaging of where Matt's going to be, you know, on what shows. Um, yeah, there's some stories like that, I, I guess. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and then my, my other question for you, we, we talked to her a little bit earlier about, you know, the kind of commitment of board camps on the weekend and being gone. And, you know, I, I look at it as the weekend's my time off. And if I'm going to word camp, that's kind of work related. So that's mm-hmm. me being at work. Uh, it looks like word camp us next year will be during the week. So mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on that? I've seen, uh, uh, people on both sides of the spectrum. So as a word camp organizer for us last year and probably an organizer this year, um, I'm all for it. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. I think it's a long time coming to have this experiment happen. Um, we see a huge drop off on Sunday work camps on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, so there's a huge drop off. There's what annoys me the mostly is when people don't even show up on Saturday or they, they buy a ticket for, you know, the 40 bucks now up to 50 for camps that are really popular and they sell out and then they don't go because it's such a low cost of, of entry. Right. So if you're not going to come, just don't buy a ticket, you know, but, um, so some camps do Friday, Saturday because of that, because Sunday is such a low drop off anyways. So we have Friday camps in the past, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So to answer your question, my thoughts on the midweek things, it's going to be like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think it's interesting. I, I'm for it. I am for it. I think it'll be a different, a slightly skewed audience, potentially smaller, uh, because I think WordPress is still, for the people who, who go to work camps, it's still the solopreneurs, the entrepreneurs, the smaller agencies, um, and the DIY people, even though it has what 95 million WordPress websites are out there, you know, it's 37% of market share and businesses use it, but as many as, um, agencies that use WordPress, they will never go to a work camp. They don't care about the tech. They just care about the business. Even Matt has said that Matt said that I think at either last state of the union, state of the word or the one before that, that most people who use WordPress will never go to a work camp. They just can't. Right. You can't have 90 million people going to work camps. Right. That'd be crazy. Right. I mean, unless you did one like at an Astrodome, like at a big dome, you know, um, that'd be awesome. So I, I think that I think the audience may be skewed because if we go, the three of us go, right. Well, what are we giving up with Monday, Tuesday, we're giving up work week versus weekend. It's a trade off. 
businesses could go, they could, they could send their employee to go, or if the employee wants to go, they could take time off. It's, 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 uh, it's going to be interesting to see, at least, to see the demographics of business versus personal people going, coming and going. So. I, I will say I'm I'm definitely for the idea. Yeah. I hadn't been to nearly as many word camps as you have, and and I've stuck to just here locally, Dallas Fort Worth mm -hmm. area. But it would be way more easy for me to be able to go and do all these things if it was while I was already away from the family. I'm already working, you know. This is already right, right. scheduled work time. Right. Instead of saying, okay, you know, kids, I'm not going to see you this weekend, and I'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to do any of the things we normally do. You know, uh, you know, Matt's Matt's been with me. It's it's you know. It, it's it's it can be a burden on the family to just be gone you know so right, absolutely I'm excited to see how it yeah works I, I think it changes things i mean the other conferences that are out there in the wordpress space and the business level are during the week for that exact reason because it's a different audience you have pressnomics you have um uh i can't think of the other one all of a sudden it just escaped me um well there's you know convert kid there's other there means that are kind of similar you know but not just but there's pressnomics there was another one um I just escaped my, my took, took my tongue. Oh, I can't think of it. But you know, but they were, you know, Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're you know, kind of during the week when you're done, when you go home. If you want to stick around and play get around around the golf, that's one thing, you know. Um, why can't I think of the other conference? I don't well, know. I think I think most business conferences are during the week. It they are like to me. Exactly yeah. for that reason. Right. And you're right, it is easier for those who have little kids or younger kids. If you're gone for two days, then you're gone at work, right? Right. Uh, versus a weekend and i missed some stuff on the weekends when i was gone yeah I mean, and it kind of i mean in my my story is a little different maybe i mean i was a stay home, i work a work from home dad my wife had a day job outside the house so for me going away on the weekend was kind of like my back. <laughs> my getaway a little yeah sometimes you need that you know because i didn't have yeah. i didn't go to an office in those things yeah so it's kind of you kind of need that so yeah yeah, pretty interesting. Well, Adam, I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. I'm super glad to connect. I'm looking forward to the uh, the WordCamp where we get to connect in person because that's yeah. going to be awesome. And which, what's, this, uh, that's always the question. What's the next WordCamp you're going to? Where are you going to go? Which you know what? I'll probably only be back in Dallas this year because uh, I'm traveling overseas to go to Lee Jackson's event in May. Oh. So that event is going to take up quite a bit of the budget and yeah. time to be uh, to be flying over the Atlantic Ocean. So okay. uh, I'll probably just be back at, at Dallas this year. All right. Maybe I'll, I mean, I'll see. I was going to go last year. It was almost, it was on my radar. It just didn't work out for the timing. So oh, it was a well, good I don't have anything else to compare it to, but it's a nice, it's a really nice venue. All the speakers have been awesome. I mean, I, I, I really love it, but like I said, I don't, I wouldn't be able You're to you come up to Raleigh. Time. We're having one in Raleigh in theory. I'm the lead organizer. Well, we haven't applied yet, but, um, but the time is, we have a meeting, our first meeting this week, long story, some um, just changes in leadership. But uh, hopefully it'll be another Raleigh one, eleventh year, and then there's US. Um, you're, not, you're not gonna go to US. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. No. See, not with you, not with going overseas this year. That's that's eating up our our vacation and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah US is huge. I mean, I mean, it's been like 1,800 in the last couple of years. So people, it's it's a big camp. It's I don't recommend it as a first camp. I really don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one thing I do like about about going to the Dallas Fort Worth one here. It's it's nice and intimate. You could you could probably go meet everybody there if you were yeah. really determined. Yeah, so. Matt, where are you going next? Uh, probably. Well, I am going overseas, uh, okay. and then probably Dallas. Okay. All right. A, Although no is uh, is U.S. this next year in St. Chicago? Louis again. No, oh. St. Louis again. St. Louis again. All right. Two, two years. Two years in a row, same place. Cool. So this year they'll announce where it's going to be for the next two years. I'll tell you where it's not going to be. It's not going to be Raleigh. I'm not applying for that. <laughs> <laughs> like the Olympic bid. I don't want to deal with that right now. No doubt. Well, awesome. We'll make sure cool. to include uh, links to everything we talked about here in the show notes. I'm, I'm super glad to have you on and thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. Uh, I think that's super useful and, and people need to get out there and look for some meetups in their area. Look for the next WordCamp they can uh, they can actually get to. Uh, there's there's usually somewhere, uh, one somewhere near you. So uh, So definitely go check that out. And as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us in return is to share our content, subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channels, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it helps support the show. That's all for now. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye. See you.